Hi, Ty Lord Mustacheson here with a collections video. I've been really pumped up about PlayStation 1 lately. I've been getting back into PlayStation 1. Might be some influence from Tight White and That Game Collector. Because they're all about that right now. Uh, the past few months, uh, maybe the last six months, I've been back into PlayStation 1. It was never my favorite console. A lot of my favorite games are on there, though. I'm starting to go revisit it and play some old classics that I missed out on. I did have a larger PlayStation 1 collection when I was a younger man, and I couldn't grow a mustache this good. I had the little um, mini PlayStation 1 with the, the screen attachment that it, with a cigarette lighter adapter. I, I had it in my car and I would play games at break time at work. One day my car got jacked into and all, all my games got stolen. I just had the loose disc back then. I wasn't big about collecting or particular. I, I had a, a, a booklet, a CD book full of all kinds of ga good games. All the Resident Evil, Silent Hills, Tekkens, all that. A bunch of good games. All that got jacked. Um, then, then over the past 20 years or so, I've been uh, just collecting them here and there if I find them at flea markets or a sale, uh, yard sales. I don't know, the, the past six months or something, I've been really into PlayStation 1 and I've been starting to uh, go on eBay and try to find deals on some of the games I lost. And I've got a few uh, gifts, found a few more at the thrift stores. So I'm starting to pile up my PlayStation 1 collection again. Anyway, so let me share my collection right here. Some of the uh, loose discs and, and sports titles. I'm not getting rid of these even if they're loose in sports titles because uh, I don't know about your neck of the woods, what part of the country, what part of the world you're in, but I never see PlayStation 1 games anymore, whether it be at, at yard sales or uh, thrift stores. So anytime I see something, I get excited and I grab it, even if it's a sports game. I won't spend more than a dollar, but I still uh, pick these up. Okay, so Jarrett and Labonte NASCAR Racing. Uh, I think this is one Tight White gave me in a package. I'm not huge on the, the old NASCAR. Well, my dad and my granddad really love the NASCAR. I, I try to get into it, but it's just hard for me. I don't know, th these graphics look pretty good though. Well, that's the thing about the racing games, I always hold up. Anyway, yeah, I'm a disgrace to my kind. I don't... Uh, really get into NASCAR racing. It can be pretty entertaining. I guess it might be fun if you went to the actual event and watched the, the cars speeding around there like at 200 miles per hour. High Heat Major League Baseball. I picked that up for a dollar at the music shop. Um, and here's a fun arcade football game, NFL Blitz. What's this, 2000 and, or 2000, dang. Almost 20 years old. And then NBA Live 2000. Uh, these things back then were just so amazing. Just all these uh, polygonal characters uh, on the court at once. I thought it was amazing back then. Uh, okay, and then on to some, some loose discs. Some disc only diarrhea, as uh, MC Murr would say. Here's a fun one my uh, brother and I used to play. A little beat-em-up, or hack and slash, Star Wars Episode One Jedi Force Battles. No, Jedi Power Battles. This is a, a little, uh, kind of a, a almost a side-scrolling beat-em-up. It, it's 3D, it kind of reminds me of those, uh, those Lord of the Rings games that came out uh, from EA on, on the PlayStation 2. This was before that though, but uh, this had different characters you could play as. Oh, you could play as uh, a lot of the Jedi from the uh, episode one, like like uh, Ewan McGregor you could be, and uh, Liam Neeson you could be, and uh, Samuel L. Jackson, and Hot Black Girl, and unfortunate face man 
Yeah, pretty fun little little beat em up. Got a little, some platforming in there, which kind of gets annoying. Medal of Honor Underground. I think this was the second Medal of Honor. Um, uh, these these were pretty high budget uh, AAA games back then. This is when they started letting you use the dual analog uh, thumbsticks to control first person shooters. Yeah, so that, this is a fun one. Independence Day of the Game. I don't know about that one. That, that one's not my favorite. Oh, here's one I got from Hidden Game Room. Uh, Nuclear Strike. Still haven't played it yet, but I gotta go through these all and, and play them one day. Uh, some demo discs from PlayStation Magazine uh, of January 2001. There's quite a few demos on that one. A demo of Iron and Blood fighting game. I think it's Dungeons and Dragons the fighting game. I couldn't get into that one. A Tomb Raider 2. My wife found that for me for a dollar at the Goodwill. And then Extreme 2 without the manual there. Uh, my wife found that for me for a, a dollar. It looks like it has uh, downhill snowboarding and bicycling. Looks like Oh yeah, this is the one that had the the downhill biking, mountain biking or sledding and all that and you could kick each other kind of like road rash. <laughs> Okay, on to some of, more of my favorite ones. Uh, MTV Music Generator Volume 1. Uh, this is probably my favorite piece of software ever created. I've always, I always wanted to be a music composer for video games ever since I was a little kid. I never tried to follow that career or take any classes for it or anything. Um, but this, Music Generator Volume 1, is really good. Um, musical composition software um, it has a lot of little pre-made samples on there but you can go into these little riffs and, and and edit them you could create any song you want there's thousands of sound samples uh, instrument samples in here um, I've, I've spent so many hours of my life playing with this thing uh, the PC version is the one I play now but before that before I had a computer I didn't have a computer until I was like 20 or 21. So before I had a computer, this was my uh, music uh, editing or music composing software. So I would I would make songs on this and then uh, hook the the audio into a a cassette player and and record it. And and now I have this on a PC or later on I got it on PC so you could just uh, make your song and then convert it into a mp3 and listen to it on, on your uh, computer or whatever but man this is a great great uh, piece of software right here I ended up finding this at a game store in Idaho for five dollars a few years ago because I, I my original copy got jacked here here's a fun little uh, space shooter uh, spaceship it's not really a shooter spaceship uh, it's sort of a first-person space shooting adventure. Um, you pilot a ship, kind of like dog fights in space. The cool thing about this is it has a full motion video with actors like um, Mark Hamill, he's the star, and uh, the guy who plays Biff. There's all kinds of big Hollywood actors in here. Malcolm McDowell from Clockwork Orange. I don't know, go check out an internet movie database. There's a lot of big... Uh, um, movie stars from the time in here and the, and the acting in here I like it it has a bunch of fun little cutscenes in here it kind of feels like a movie you go out on your little space mission and kill all the baddies or whatever then you come back and there's more videos to watch I really like stuff like this this kind of blew me away back then another game in the same vein Star Wars Rebel Assault 2 kind of a cinematic Star Wars uh, space shooting game uh, more hilarious full motion videos in here. Love this type of stuff. Um, this won't play on my PS3. I think you need a uh, the original uh, PlayStation 1 to play this. I recently got uh, all three 007 games for PlayStation 1. Uh, Tomorrow Never Dies. This is a fun third person shooter. This is the first really good third person shooter on uh, PlayStation or on any video game console. They went on to have really great uh, 
third person shooters on the PlayStation 2 and all that. Uh, I don't know, all these EA James Bond games are the best, uh, I think. This one follows the movie uh, Tomorrow Never Dies. You remember when there were always movie tie-in games? And then everyone clowned on him. Like every movie that came out at the theater, there was a, a video game tie-in, or it seemed like a lot of them. But then every, everyone would just clown on him, and now they're all gone. I kind of wish we'd go back to that. Because uh, sometimes when you go watch a movie and you like the movie, you think, wow, I want to experience this movie in another way. And playing a video game to do that, a lot of people say that movie games are trash, but I kind of enjoyed playing a game that where I enjoyed the movie. Even though most movies now I'm not really into, so whatever. Anyway, this one's really tight. It doesn't even uh, not only does it follow uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, but it has a lot of little um, homages to older Bond movies. The first level is there's, there's a downhill skiing, a snow skiing level, and you uh, eventually fight all the baddies and escape and, and fly off the edge of the cliff and out pops the Union Jack. A parachute just like the spy who loved me so this is a really cool bond game another really cool one and this one's hard I could never beat it 007 racing this has all kinds of uh, classic bond movie references a lot of cars and, and scenes from the movies the Aston Martin's in there BMW um, I think the Lotus is in there too it's, it's usually a racing game but it does have like twisted metal elements where you have the machine guns and rockets, the car gadgets and all that. And then the old uh, The World Is Not Enough. This one is nowhere near as good as the N64 version, but it, it does what it can. It's not bad. Um, this is another example of why N64 is better than PlayStation. If you if you put these two games side by side, the, the N64 version and the PlayStation 2. I don't want to knock this though. This is the PlayStation uh, collection video. But yeah, glad to have all of these now. I actually ordered all these online on eBay. I found a good uh, price. These were all like 10 bucks shipped. They're all in really good shape. These two are the greatest kit green labels, but I don't care. Some more adventure games. Here's another one uh, Tight White sent me. Frogger. Like a 3D version of Frogger. This is a uh, you can't go wrong with these uh, Frogger games. Uh, this is a step up. There's more stages and whatever, more obstacles than the old Atari version, but yeah, cool to have uh, that one in the collection. Another one, Tight White, sent me, and this is the one that one of the games that sort of sold me on the PlayStation One was a Tomb Raider. Uh, stuff like this back then was amazing. These 3D environments to jump around and explore. And I didn't have this. I think this is one of the games that got jacked out of my car, but uh, Tight White sent me that one. Found this one at the thrift store. It had, couldn't be more than a couple dollars. I don't remember. Um, Toy Story 2. This is actually a really fun 3D platformer. Um, I was playing with my daughters. My daughters love Toy Story, and they were getting into this one. Kind of a collect-a-thon, is that what you call it, where you collect the items. I think there's a boss on each level, like you fight inside the... You explore the house and and, uh, and collect items, and then you explore the backyard, and then you explore a construction site. These little toys running around like on I-beams and uh, running around on top of houses. It's, it's a pretty fun uh, little platformer. Again, I'm curious to see how this looks on N64 because it looks pretty good on uh, PlayStation 2. Rainbow Six Lone Wolf. Um, this is one I think my... I don't know how I came upon this one. It, it might be easier to manage. I always thought Rainbow Six games were kind of difficult. You got to place your all your, your men around at different locations and you get hit once and you're dead. You got to be very strategic with those Rainbow Six games. This is a lone wolf, so I'm thinking you might just have one guy. So it might be easier for me to manage, like Splinter Cell. I got to give this one another try, actually. Oh, speaking of that type of game, a Siphon Filter. Uh, this is the one that uh, Henry G says is really good. I got to try this one. It, it kind of looks like. Um, 
the uh, Bond games, the third person uh, shooter, stealth games. That's probably something I would like. Here's another really good one, uh, Medal of Honor. Just straight Medal of Honor. This is one of the, the better first person shooters on PlayStation 1. You can use the dual analog sticks on this one. Yeah, this was, a, it was really cool to see what they were able to do back then with first person shooters. I, I thought it's pretty amazing. And then here's another one, Tight White gave me Asteroids, like a, like a newer version of 3D Asteroids. Uh, and uh, and the, the graphics in this holds up well. I got this one for $2 at the music shop, Army Men, Sarge's Heroes. This is probably another fun little shooter 3D action game. Uh, here's one I spent a lot of time on, but I don't think I ever beat it. It's very difficult. Driver 2. Um, Talk about realistic. Um, man, th this game is amazing for its time. Not only do, are the graphics really good, really detailed for PlayStation 1, um, just the whole physics of the car, the, the, all the racing, um, the, the way the car handles, it's, it's not uh, arcadey at all. all. The car moves very realistically. Like if you slam the brakes too hard, you'll, you'll get stuck, or, or if you try to do a 180 or whatever, you'll either go too far or not far enough and get jammed up. Like you really have to be precise and treat it like it's a, a real car in this game. It's kind of frustrating, but like one, it's kind of challenging though. The challenge is kind of fun to get these, uh, get these cars down. And this is a big open world game like uh, Grand Theft Auto 3. Yeah, you can do a free play mode. That's what my brother and I mostly did. You could drive around this huge city yeah, this game had uh, big maps in it, like big realistic uh, open world maps. It had uh, Chicago, uh, Las Vegas, Havana, and Rio. Th this is a cool game. This is amazing. A lot of the effects in here are really good too, like uh, like the skid marks with the tires. And uh, when you go on the grass, it leaves like uh, uh, tire marks in the grass. Just a really cool detailed game for the time. Okay, I've been getting into RPGs lately because uh, I have little kids around. I can't be playing hard uh, action games where I rage out. I feel, I feel like RPGs I kind of kind of can chill out and relax. Maybe put something on in the background or or de deal with my family at the same time because mostly you're just sitting there pressing one button over and over and you're not really timed to do anything um, and as long as there's a lot of save points I, I, I like RPGs like I go grind around fight some monsters go back save you could put a little a few minutes in here and there I've been enjoying a lot uh, RPGs a lot lately I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to get through Final Fantasy 7 I lost my save progress on my Vita Last 20 hours of gameplay. I'm, tr I'm trying to start it again on my uh, PSP right now. Hopefully it doesn't happen on that. Uh, before I started on Final Fantasy, I was working on this one. And I was really enjoying this. I think I moved the, the PlayStation out of the living room. That's why I never finished this. Because I had it on, on my memory card. But I was playing this. I got this at the uh, Sacramento Gamers Expo. I got it for a good price. I traded a guy uh, my old DS box. Um, I think that this is a high quality RPG, a Japanese RPG. It's a Sony exclusive. I think it's from uh, Sony publishes it. Um, I think it has uh, the production value of Final Fantasy. Yeah, from what I played, it's really fun. Uh, all that turn battle stuff, but but I don't mind that anymore. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back into this one after I'm done with uh, Final Fantasy VII. Speaking of Final Fantasy, uh, got the old anthology here. Um, Maniac Gaming gave me this. I think it was for a trade or for Christmas or something. This one's still sealed, so I'm kind of reluctant to open it. I really wanted to play Final Fantasy V. Um, I think that's uh, Mainly's favorite game of the series, V. And I was kind of really looking forward to playing that, but I kind of, I hear it's kind of hard, and I don't want to uh, get all deep into that and get frustrated with it. 
And then, the, and then this also has Final Fantasy VI on it. Um, so I might play that on this. I guess it, this, this thing has extra cinematic cutscenes from the uh, Super Nintendo version. I might actually play it on my, my SNES Classic so I don't have to open this. I don't know. But Final Fantasy III, uh, aka VI, is one I want to play. That um, I wanted to play five too. I'm trying to get through the Final Fantasies right now, but uh, not having any luck. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did start Final Fantasy VIII. I forgot this was a disc only copy. I have all four discs here in sleeves. I did start this one. This one always appealed to me because I thought the visuals looked really good. I like the character models look like real people, like they were proportionate, and it had really cool looking uh, backgrounds. But people were saying, no, don't play it, it's not good. But I said, I don't know, it looks good to me. So I started playing it, and I kind of see why people don't like it. I need to give it more of a chance. It's kind of like a, one of those school games where you're like a teenage kid in school, and you, and you have, uh, like you're some kind of monster killing school, uh, training school, and you just kind of uh, navigate around this school. So maybe it might be one of those those high school drama games like Persona. I'm not really into those. Yeah, but I mean the visuals in here look really good. It has kind of like that Resident Evil look, kind of realistic. Um, yeah, I don't know. I got to give it more. Of a, uh, I got to give it another chance. I played it for a few hours and like I wasn't really feeling it. This is probably my my uh, most prized possession on the old uh, PlayStation. Uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. This was in a package from Hav. Jeez, gave me this one. Very generous uh, for them to send me this thing. I would have never uh, found this one out in the wild for cheap. Um, and this is the black label too. Yeah, all complete in here. It has a nice little cover. I actually opened it up and, and played through it though. This is a great game. Probably one of my favorite PlayStation 1 games now. I think back at the time when this came out, I wasn't really feeling it. Like we were moving on to 3D, and I was all into Resident Evil and stuff, and, and Tomb Raider and Tekken. Like, and I was kind of like, why are you still trying to push out these 2D games? We got these 3D games coming out. I can play the 2D games on Super Nintendo, but I, but this could not be done on Super Nintendo. There are some great effects in here. This works really well as a 2D uh, platformer. Um, uh, sort of like Castlevania, or sort of like uh, Simon's Quest, or, or Metroid. It's kind of like an open map. You just go around and explore. I kind of uh, think these games are kind of like Legend of Zelda if you flipped them 90 degrees. Like like Zelda's the overhead, and you're uh, exploring the map from overhead. This one, it's a side view. You, you explore this big castle, and certain rooms are locked off. You have to, to uh, get an item to get through like Metroid and Super Metroid. But man, what an enjoyable game. I consider this a role-playing game too, because you can grind levels. If you suck at Castlevanias like I do, but like uh, are intrigued by them, this is for you. Because I could never do any of those Castlevania games. Uh, I, I just think, I, I can do Ninja Gaiden, it's just Castlevania games are hard, but they're kind of slow and sluggish, and I just cannot I don't have the patience to get into them to, to beat those hard games. This thing though, it's kind of, it's more fast paced. This guy kind of moves like uh, Ryu from Ninja Gaiden. This Alucard, uh, and he has a sword, he doesn't have a whip. You can get all kinds of different weapons too. I'm just using the sword as an example. Like you can run and slash, it feels more like Ninja Gaiden. And if you suck at the Castlevania, it doesn't matter. If you can go grind levels, I found a lot of good spots in here to go uh, kill enemies, grind levels, get my guy super powerful so I could just smash the bosses. Man, just a great game. I'm really glad I, I experienced this for the first time this year. <laughs> and then I always did have this uh, music sample disc, uh, Symphony of the Night. Uh, it has the music from all of the Castlevanias up to Symph uh, Symphony of the Night. Uh, I used to listen to this in my car, I'm a dork, but now I have that, uh, I have the game to accompany that now. 
Oh, and then uh, Soul Reaver I got, I think it was buy two, get one free at GameStop online. I was hoping it came with the uh, the case, but it didn't. I started playing this for a few hours. This is kind of ahead of its time. Kind of a, a third-person adventure game. I think it's pretty impressive for the time. Uh, I'm thinking maybe I should play Blood Omen before I play this, though. And then some uh, really great fighting games here. Uh, recently got this one for a good price on eBay. Street Fighter EX2. Uh, EX2 Plus. This this is probably my favorite fighting game on, on PlayStation 1. This is tight. Uh, it almost feels like Street Fighter V. And the graphics are pretty good too. It's, it's 2D fighting but the characters are uh, 3D. I really got to try that new EX Layer, or fighting, fighting EX Layers, or it's like a sequel to this. Oh, here's a, a, a gift from my buddy Gamers Manuel, uh, Jurassic Park Warpath, a, a fighting game with the dinosaurs from the Jurassic Park movie. I get a kick out of stuff like this. It's not a bad game, it's just ridiculous. You fight at the, the movie locations as dinosaurs. Here's Smackdown. Uh, I'm not really into the the PlayStation 1 wrestling games. I like the N64 ones. Oh, I, um, S uh, Cybernetic Slayer was saying this is the, the best, though. I should give this another chance. Saw like a little review on this uh, from Cybernetic Slayer, and it looked pretty good. A lot of, uh, a lot of options, a lot of stuff to do in this game. Uh, Star Wars Masters of Terrace Kasi fighting game. It, back then everything needed a fighting game. Uh, I guess Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat were so big that every single franchise needed a fighting game and I didn't mind that because I like fighting games. I like I love Star Wars and I love fighting games so this was a no-brainer for me. I bought it when it first came out and I liked it and I still like it. Kinda sluggish you, it's kind of hard to get the pattern down or the or the timing down, but once you get it down, it's a pretty fun game. And it has music from the movie. Just all, all the background music is just tracks out of the movies, the John Williams music. And then uh, the only long box I have, uh, Street Fighter the movie, the game. I got this off of eBay when I had some extra money. I always loved this game. I like the movie, but something about the game was really cool that you could play these Street Fighter characters as digitized actors. And it plays just fine. It plays like a Street Fighter, a Super Street Fighter Turbo. But yeah, like, uh, it's just hilarious. Jean-Claude Van Damme is, uh, is guile. It has a lot of big movie stars in here, like this girl from uh, the place Chun-Li. I think she's in like one of those new superhero shows now. And then, uh, oh, this guy that plays Balrog. Uh, this guy's getting kind of popular in the James Bond fan community now. He's He had a little small part as an agent in uh, License to Kill. But uh, I, I don't know, I just heard an interview with him on James Bond Radio and he seems like a really cool dude. I like to hear behind the scenes stuff with James Bond movies. Uh, so, this, so this guy also played Balrog, so he's in a Bond movie and he plays Balrog, so he's cool with me. Uh, Grandel Bush is his name, that actor. And then this Rio guy, you see him in a lot of movies now. Uh, I thought these Ken and Ryus, the, they, the actors they picked were good, but, uh, but I think Ken needed to have that, that blonde long hair. He looks more like Johnny Cage in this. And then this Blanca, that was ridiculous. And this Vega guy was perfect. That was, that was the perfect uh, Vega. That's a great movie adaptation of Vega. And, and the Zangief guy too. Uh, what is this guy's name? This actor, I can't think of it. He played uh, Leatherface in the new Texas Chainsaw Massacres. And, and he also played Max Shrek's son in uh, Batman Returns. Dad, go, save yourself. <laughs> and this guy that played DJ, you remember seeing him, he was in like uh, Return of the Living Dead in one of the Friday the 13th movies. Uh, I like this guy that plays Sagat, his name's Wes Studi, he played like Geronimo and he played in Last of the Mohicans. He usually plays like a Native American 
uh, character. He played Sagat in here. Of course, he's not tall enough to be Sagat, but I th thought he pulled off the, this character. I liked him a lot uh, in Street Fighter, the movie. And then Raul Julia here put his all into that. Uh, he got to appreciate that uh, passion he put into M. Bison. This is probably the best M. Bison. <laughs> like, he really hammed it up. He almost, he almost reminded me of something like, like Christopher Lloyd would play. And I think this was the first PlayStation 1 game I ever got. I remember like calling like my friends over and my sister when I put in the this disc and they played like a video, a full color video of like a trailer of the movie. And I was like, wow, this video game has looks like real, it looks like a movie. I, didn't, I wasn't used to putting a game in and seeing like a full color, nice looking video. I played Sega CD before that this and they were kind of pixelated and not much color. But you put this one in and there was a a video like wow this this game looks so real okay then here's some of my favorites Silent Hill I just got from uh, GameStop online for really good deal considering what people uh, charge for it now I got it for a good deal Silent Hill I, I put a lot of time into this one I never beat it this is another uh, classic PlayStation 1 game I need to go back and beat Part 2, I've played through that many times. I love Silent Hill 2. I gotta get through this one, though. I kinda feel like this one's a little bit harder. Uh, let me know if you agree with that. Oh, okay, then some of my favorites here. And I recently acquired all of these. Trying to fill up my Resident Evil collection. I'm not going for all the variants, just I want to have uh, every... Uh, every game for every system that I have. Uh, Resident Evil Director's Cut Platinum Hits. I got that one for $10 shipped to me, or $10 or $11, so I thought that was a good deal. I would never find this. I see people find this for cheap at the thrift stores. I, I can never find anything that's good at a thrift store. At one time, I considered this my favorite game of all time. This game is so good. I, I love campy old uh, Italian zombie movies. And this... Uh, I kind of felt like it was going for that. I love the, the the awkward acting in here. I love the fixed cameras. I love the tank control. I couldn't. This can't be any other way. A lot of people don't like the way that tank control works, or they think it hasn't date. It's outdated. But I can't have it any other way. I love the tank control. I love the the bad acting. I love exploring this mansion. And this felt so real at the time. It wasn't like Castlevania or Metroid where the levels don't look like real places. They just look like video game places. This looked like a real place that you could explore. I'd go unlock areas, go find puzzle pieces to unlock other areas, or beat a boss to unlock an area. So it kind of felt like Metroid brought to the next level. Yeah, the pre-rendered background, it, just, it looked like a real place. And then, of course, Resident Evil 2. My buddy uh, Michael Emerald Game Cave sent me this one, a little trade we did. I didn't have this one. I'm really glad he sent it to me. I don't know how he came upon an American American copy, NTSC, of Resident Evil 2 over there in Australia. But I'm glad he sent me this because I didn't have it on PlayStation 2. I have it on GameCube. I have it on Dreamcast. I have it on N64. Uh, what else? That's about it, yeah. I don't have it on the, the Tiger Com or whatever, the Game Com. Uh, Resident Evil 2. Um, this didn't have as big of an impact on me as 1, but this is just brought up to the next level. Everything about it is is uh, is improved. Uh, like I said, I like the first one a lot better, but this you cannot go wrong with this one. This was a lot of people's favorite to this day. I just like the first one a little bit more. I think it... Uh, I like the mansion setting over over the uh, the police station setting, uh, and the uh, voice acting in here got uh, is not as bad. Kind of kind of uh, takes itself more seriously. Yeah, this one's too this long. Everyone knows about this how great it is, and then this one here. This was never my favorite, but I had to get it. Uh, but I was afraid it would get too expensive if there's a new 
remake of this coming out. I was afraid. Uh, I found this for under thirty dollars, so I went ahead and got it. Uh, Resident Evil Three. Well, this one wasn't one of my favorites. I thought it was just more of the same, but there was more action. I gotta go replay it again. I hear a lot of people say this is their favorite. Of course, the newer games are gonna look better and sound better, and they're gonna have new techniques to make it a better experience. Um, but I don't know. I think some about one and two I like more than this. I'm glad Jill came back here. I like Jill Valentine from Resident Evil One. And then this Nemesis guy, everyone. Oh, what a great new uh, mechanic this game has. That Nemesis guy stalks you throughout the map. He just shows up every once in a while. You have to run away or fight him. But they kind of already did that in 2 with the uh, Mr. X Tyrant guy. So it's not really anything new. Maybe this guy's design is cooler. <laughs> and then that Resident Evil movie was it Resident Evil 2 Apocalypse. I thought the uh, nemesis in that was pretty accurate. It looked pretty close to the game. Oh, and then here's another one. I guess you could say it's a guilty pleasure. I always liked this game. A lot of people talk trash about it. I, I like, it. once again, bad acting. Uh, really weird dialogue. Um, I, I enjoy stuff like that. This one's first person, so all the environments are full 3D. Um, so I, I thought it was cool. It's kind of a short game, kind of easy. You don't have any continues or save points, but um, I enjoyed this game. I, 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 wouldn't, I don't mind going back and playing it every once in a while. Okay, last one here, uh, another survival horror. This is one of my uh, favorite games from back then. I never beat it. I, I, this is another one I'm putting in recently and I'm trying to get through it. Uh, I would always get stuck back then. I didn't have a computer with the internet to find out how to get through puzzles. I got pretty far on it. I'm trying to play through it again now, but anyway, Overblood. Uh, I just, uh, this is one of the ones that got jacked out of my car. Sort of like Resident Evil, you're in an underground facility and there was some kind of uh, outbreak or, or um, chemical leakage, something, uh, something got contaminated so the whole facility is on sh uh, lockdown. And then this guy is like uh, in cryo sleep, this, this bearded guy. And he wakes up uh, when when the uh, the facility's on lockdown, and and from there you just have to go explore and find out what's going on. You make friends with a little R two D two looking robot. He's like your companion. You can switch back and forth between him and the robot to do puzzles. Uh, this has the uh, the Resident Evil camera view, or you can switch to first person, or you can switch to like over the shoulder. So it has a lot going for it. There's not a lot of action. It's just a lot of uh, kind of cool, eerie, unsettling uh, areas to explore, look for puzzles, uh, puzzle pieces. Um, like I said before, it kind of reminds me of like a, a 70s or 60s sci-fi movie. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a grill in here too, you can, uh, uh, that joins your party, I think you can switch back and forth between the boy and the girl. Yeah, this is just one that uh, you never hear people talk about it very much, but I enjoy it. Um, I was assuming it would be an expensive game. I thought it would be rare and expensive, but uh, but I, I was thinking I was going to go back and get all my old games that I lost. And this is one of them. I looked on eBay and it's really cheap, like 20 bucks. So I went ahead and ordered that. So I'm glad to have that back in my collection, the old Overblood. And I gotta finish it too. Yeah, really been into the PlayStation uh, One lately. I have my my uh, original PS3, the fat backward compatible one in the living room. So that's my my good little PlayStation setup over there. I can play PlayStation One, Two, and Three games over there. So I've been playing a lot of PlayStation One games out there, and then um, and PlayStation Two. It has that built-in memory card system, so it's cool. I don't have to. Uh, to use up memory cards can store all the uh, game saves I want for PlayStation 1 and 2 anyway thanks for